Hi, my name is Deborah Johnson, and today we're going to um, talk about the topic of what is God's responsibility in the details of our life and what is ours. Um, I think really um, someone uh, presented me with a question. Their question was, how much do we do as grace believers? Um, and when do we rest and let God do his work in the details of our life? So um, we're going to do a brief survey that will prompt your own personal study. It's, that's my hope and your med meditation on those verses. Um, so it will help you in the details of your life. Um, and it's basically from my perspective, what I've learned and what my experience has been over the years. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for um, your provision, what you've given us, and your desire for us to learn and grow. Help us to realize that great love and yield. Yield to allow your Holy Spirit to lead us. And we just praise you and thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. Um, the audience that uh, I'm intending this for is for those who are believers, those who have trusted Christ and understand that, that his death on the cross, his blood payment, uh, fully was satisfying to pay for all your sins in God's eyes. And now we have um, an atonement with God. And um, we have the Holy Spirit. And in addition... Um, I would expect the audience to have some understanding of Paul's distinctive ministry, um, how to rightly divide. Um, I'm not going to go into those issues. And also just a general awareness of some of Paul's uh, epistles and some of his the, the verses there. I'm not going to go through explaining all the details of the verses. I will reference them uh, for your own discussion. Please do call me. Um, you know, and or um, get in contact with me, and I will be glad to go into it further if you have questions. Okay, um, the problem. It seems to me that the problem as believers that we have is that life is hard. There's suffering and. <clears throat> While we might have some head knowledge and understanding of Paul's epistles, um, we might have some pieces that are still uh, either inaccurate or put together wrong. And we need, and we might even have some tradition in our thinking. And so, what I'm hoping is this session might help to clarify some of the questions that we have on how God works today and what our responsibility is. Um, one perspective in the grace message might be we rest, we don't do anything. We kick our feet up and it's grace, we don't do any work. Um, however, that's not quite accurate. And if you just look up the word work and doing, and action words that Paul uses all throughout his epistles, um, you will find that there is work to be done. Um, so with that said, that is um, maybe hard to understand. There are three sufferings that we experience in this life. The sufferings of this present time, which is normal, even unbelievers experience that. That's like calamity, sickness, um, car accidents, things like that. Uh, we, we suffer because we are um, ambassadors for Christ and living for him. And then we also suffer from the sowing and reaping of, of unwise choices that we make. So you can understand that more fully in Romans 6, 7, and 8. We're not going to go into that uh, altogether. Um, the other thing that's important to understand, and the, the problem is, man, um, man doesn't really understand that, that God is dealing, or believers don't understand that God is dealing with us as adults, not as children. God dealt with Israel as children. He called them the children of Israel. But 
for with us, he deals with us as adults. Even though once you get saved, you're still a babe in Christ. And he is trying to teach you and mature you up through his epistles, Paul's epistles, so that you can function as an adult. And so um, there is free will involved, um, as it always has been in the Bible. And there's also some things that God has done different in the body of Christ that we're going to talk about. So that's something that we need to understand. Um, the law was for children to teach them that they, they were unable to do things um, on their own, in their own effort, that they would fail, fail, fail. They needed God as their provider. And the fact is that we're under grace. Grace is uh, freely given, but there's also some work involved um, as we yield. So be thinking about that. Man's tendency coming to this question about what is God's responsibility in the details of our life and what are ours, man's tendency is to think that God's responsibility is that um, he's like a genie, that he you rub the, the lamp and just like that he changes your circumstance or he, they want God to work that way. They, their thinking is geared toward that. They pray that way. Um, or they're like Israel and they don't need God. They do everything on their own and they keep working, working, working under the law and try, 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 try and don't access God's power and wisdom. So those two are the approaches. And it's funny because uh, as I was reading an old brand searchlight, um, November of 2019, I came across an article about quench not the spirit. And in that article, um, as I began to read it, they used an analogy. And it was an analogy of a man who um, wanted to cut down trees more efficiently. He was doing it by hand. And so he went to the hardware store and bought a chainsaw. And it sounded like it was a real good deal. He was going to be able to cut, you know, maybe tenfold of what he was doing by hand. Um, but he brought, he brought it back and said, it's not working. I could only cut three cords of wood. And before, without this chainsaw, I could do four cords. And the, the worker said, well, let's go on in the back um, of the store and let's see what the problem is. And he... He plugged it in and uh, turned it on and it made this big loud noise and and the the guy who bought the chainsaw said what is that noise and he goes it's the chainsaw I turned it on and here to find out the man never turned it on he never used the power of the chainsaw um, he used his own effort very much like Israel one of the ways man does things is he uses his own effort and so as a result the chainsaw actually slowed him down and he was unable to do the work he wanted um, another analogy in the same in the same um, example could be that the man takes the chainsaw home and puts it on the stoop um, and sits back and just waits for it to work. Uh, doesn't try, doesn't use it at all, just waits for it to do all the work. And so very similarly, man wants a quick pill and he wants God to just come in, swoop down, take that chainsaw and do all the work and deal with all the problems that are in our life. But that is just not how he works. God does have a way. And understanding his way really helps us not to get frustrated, even angry with God, because he's not doing his part, uh, what you thought was his part. And so let's just, we're not going to go to all the verses in the Bible. This is just a brief survey of some of the verses through Paul's epistles on this topic. Um, it is 
Paul's epistles are progressive. They start from Romans, and that's the foundational doctrine. And then it builds as you go through to Philemon. We know that Romans through Galatians are is the foundational epistles. And then you've got Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, and these books are more advanced doctrine. And then you've got the, the leadership um, epistles, those that are being in leadership positions and some, some doctrine to help them uh, in the church and in, with the body of Christ. So it progresses on. It builds each, each verse, each chapter, each book builds on the last. So, but we're not going to go through um, this issue in this way. We're going to just pick out a, key, a few key verses, key concepts, so that we got, got a handle on just generally how God works. And that would be your job. Your job would be to go back and search. Read through Paul's epistles. You can read three chapters a day and get through it in a month. Think, read it with a purpose. Read the epistles and find out how God works. Find out what's expected of us. What does Paul teach us that we're, we're expected to do? So that would be very helpful with these things in mind. Um, so in a lot, of, a lot of ways, be open to realize that God may be working differently than what you think. So be open to what, what the verses say. What I've learned is God's responsibility in our, the details of our life never ends. He has provided some things. That's true. But he continues to work with us and help us through our entire Christian walk. Um, and we will talk about specifically how. Um, He's provided some things, and we're not going to go through all the verses either. I'm going to assume that you know um, that he's given us his word. Um, for example, 2 Timothy 3.16, it's the word of God is quick, and or I'm sorry, that's Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. 2 Timothy 3.16 um, is another good verse. What we want to do is think in terms of how it works. And it works in the inner man. And how, how that happens is God has also given us the Holy Spirit. The moment we have trusted Christ, the Spirit comes in. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2 teaches that it takes the things of God, the deep things of God, and teaches our spirit so that we're, under, we're understanding and we can apply it to the details of life. He actually is giving us and building an edifice of doctrine, a form of doctrine in our inner man so that we have the mind of Christ. Uh, I want to read a verse, Romans 6, 17. It says, but God be thanked that we were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Ye were the servants of sin, but now you obeyed this form of doctrine Paul delivered to them. The form of doctrine I believe he's talking about is the chapters before this, Romans 1 through 5, justification. And he's trying to encourage them to go on. The form actually starts in Romans 1. It goes all the way to Philemon. It's building this edifice, this construction in our inner man. And we're responsible the foundation is Christ, and we're responsible for it, we'll see in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, for how we build on it. <clears throat> we're rewarded accordingly. Anyway, so he's given us this form of doctrine. He's given us the mechanism, a teacher, to teach us. And um, he's given us prayer. Prayer so that we can be in constant communication with God. We can share with him all our challenges, like Philippians four teaches and we can tell him about what our problems are and he comforts us with the, with the the spirit stirring up verses helping them to come to remembrance to comfort our hearts and to help us make decisions excuse me he's also given us the body of christ now 
I would say this is the closest to a physical manifestation of God's help to us is through the body of Christ at times, not always. For example, um, let's say a mom is, goes to the hospital, she's sick in the hospital, she no longer can cook meals for her family. Um, she's praying, God, help my family. I can't do anything. I'm in the hospital. What can happen? And she prays and she has, she talks to her friends, asks them to pray for her. And as they pray, they think, and God stirs up in them, how can they love her on Christ's behalf? And one way might be making some meals and giving them to to her family. Now that's not God miraculously putting food on their table. It's working through and in the body of Christ as you know they are here on, on Christ's behalf in his stead to minister to the saints. And so that's one of the things that the saints can do. They can encourage, they can do many, many things, but that sometimes is a me mechanism God uses. Uh, we can't count on it. We can't force it. It's God's word working in others as they yield. Um, and another provision that God gives us is basically a more an all-encompassing um, provision, and that is everything we are comes from God. And everything we see, everything we have, we think we've acquired it, but actually God provided everything. He provided the materials to make your house, to, to make your furniture. Even though a man might have put it together, a, a furniture company, God provided everything we need. And so um, I want to go to a verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And I want to read a verse that Paul Paul said to the Corinthians who were high-minded and they were really functioning on their own power, the worldly power and wisdom instead of God's power and wisdom. And this is what he says in chapter 4 of 1 Corinthians verse 7. For whom maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? God gives us everything. Everything comes from him, by him and for him. And everything that we have is to be used for his honor and glory. That's enough for another time. Um, we're bought with a price and we, our spirit and, and our bodies are gods now. Anyway, so all that to say that, that everything that we have has been provided for us to enable us to, to deal with the challenges of the walk in this life. Um, let's also talk about the fact that in Romans 8, um, with giving us the Holy Spirit, I wanted to bring this up, I forgot. Uh, one of the issues of giving us the Holy Spirit is the fact that um, God leads us in this teaching. Um, as we allow him, he leads us to teach us the things that we need to know, precisely what we need at the time. Let's read uh, Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, sons or adult, um, spiritual adults, sons of God. As you choose... Your will is to yield and allow God to lead instead of letting your flesh lead. Um, he's, he's enabled to, to um, do some things in your life. You're going to be able to access his power and wisdom. That's Romans 6, 7, and 8. Um, one of the things that he does, let's go to 8, 11. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. If, if we read the word, meditate on the word, allow it to dwell, feel at home in us, it's constantly in our mind, then God's able to do some things. 
He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies. It'll enable your body to be able to you be used for him by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Your spiritual life shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, as you yield unto God, you're, you're putting to death the actions of sin in your body. You shall live. God does this in you as you yield. So th these things are very important. I just wanted to bring that up. Th this is some things that the prov provisions. Um, two more I, I think are important. There's probably many, many more but is the sowing and reaping process that he put in place. In Galatians 5, we hear that um, what you sow is what you'll reap. And if you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap to the flesh, the fruit of the flesh. If you sow to the Spirit, you'll reap the fruit of the Spirit. Why is this important? Because it teaches you when you're on the wrong road and you have these kind of, you know, um, reaping reapings in the flesh. You drive too fast, you get a ticket, you um, you eat the wrong foods, you eat, overeat, maybe you stuff yourself the next day you're sick. These are things that teach you. This is a process that God put into place for all mankind, not just believers. But it's more important for us in, in our spiritual walk and um, in our life because God will teach us. It's one of the ways the Holy Spirit teaches us to keep um, improving and allowing things that we don't do exactly right as we you know try some things it says oh wow I should have done it this other way you learn just like um, our spiritual walk parallels uh, developmental um, growth um, as a child grows from a, a, a baby or an infant all the way up to adulthood, it's similar to a babe in Christ all the way up to adulthood. And that is that it, it's slow, it takes time, and it takes progressing through the form of doctrine, a child, the doctrine that a child learns through his life to become an adult. His parents are responsible to teach him and then they go to school all these things put together, eventually they're given more and more freedom and responsibility. They're dealt with under the law as a child, told what to do, and those freedoms come and the parents release their um, control. And in a sense, in the Bible, that's really what you see. In Israel, God was teaching Israel, the children of Israel, and um, now God, through the um, body of Christ, he's dealing with us as adults. And so we have some things, we have some wisdom and knowledge in Romans through Philemon that we, as we progress through it, we get more and more independent as we try it out. It's just like a baby learning to um, sit up, crawl, walk, they fall, they hit their head, they, uh, when then they start trying to run and they slam into things. These are all experiences sowing and reaping will teach them to how to do it properly. And developmentally, they get their balance and they start being able to do it. Similarly, working uh, the doctrine in the details of life, it's, you don't, you don't have the verse told to you and then automatically you understand all the aspects of applying it. It takes time. So expecting God to quick, a quick pill that you have it and why isn't it working it's because you're maturing you're growing we're under construction um, okay those are basically the provisions that God provides um, our responsibilities those are God's that's God what God has done and the quickening is something he's done doing right now the teaching through the Holy Spirit and the prayer that's something that's ongoing he never quits doing that he's involved actively involved throughout our, our walk our responsibility however is to read the word meditate on it think about it how to apply it 
and then do it. How? By walking by faith in what you've been taught in your inner man, and then you do it by yielding. You yield to what God has told you to do. And, and then when, after you apply it, you think about how it could be done a little better. No failures. Um, God doesn't get mad at you for maybe not doing it properly. Um, it's just a learning process. It's like, ah, oh, I could have done it this. I could have said this. And sharing the gospel took me years and years to be comfortable sharing the gospel. I made many, many, um, um, I don't know, errors or I stumbled many times until I started to realize that I needed to just relax and speak from my heart um, instead of having a rote thing. So to say, so um, it's really done in a particular way. Let's go to Galatians 2. Galatians 2 is, again, um, something that God does on an ongoing basis. It says in verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. We died on that cross. Our old man was crucified. Nevertheless, I live. Resurrection life. Romans, this is Romans 6. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, his faithfulness to go to that cross, his faith working in my inner man. It's as we yield, we allow, we give him access and open our, to our free, our will, we're saying, we want you to work in us, Lord, and he is free to, to work out of us. Um, it says, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's it. Even though we're doing the actions, we're here on his behalf, and our body is really members of his body. It's we're allowing our body to be used of God to work it out of us. And so in a sense, we're doing it, but it's God's power and wisdom in us, in our inner man, motivating us, helping us, knowing what to do, what to say, how to do it. And we need to listen, listen to the spirit, teaching our spirit meditation it doesn't happen by just sitting in church listening to what the pastor said and go home and think you've got it down. Go home and think about it. Go home and look the verse up. Look at the context. Think on these things. Um, that's how it's done. Uh, so it dwells in us, not just stays in our head, but comes into our heart, becomes a part of us. So that's our responsibility. That and <clears throat> let's look at a couple other verses. Let's look at uh, Philippians 2. This one really addresses both our responsibility and God's. Uh, let's start in verse let's see, 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed. So remember, you've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine back there in Romans 6. We opened up with that verse. As ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but much more now in my absence, work. It says work. Work out your own salvation. This is your Christian walk, your Christian life. Um, it's not that you were saved. It's not just um, how you got saved. Salvation is, is used in different ways, in different meanings. The, the life that you now have, because you were saved, work it out. And it says, with fear and trembling. Why in fear and trembling? Because we're exalting God and in his honor, acknowledging that he is far above us and our flesh is unable to do it. We don't know how. Going into a situation, we pray to God in some of the coaching, Christian coaching that I do, 
most all of them actually I just I pray ahead and I just say I don't even know how to help this person Lord I might say the wrong thing in the flesh so it's not me let me or I, I purpose to step out of the way to yield and allow you to work in me and stir up the doctrine he it's realizing that you're not able he is able and so you don't get into that self-effort you don't expect God to miraculously make everything right like for me for the coaching cl client that I might work with person a sister in Christ um, instead we work out our own salvation in fear and trembling we know what we, we we've been taught by God and walk by faith in it and learn and grow and then there's the next verse it says for it is God in verse 13 which worketh in you that's the life we now live in the flesh we live by the faith of the Son of God it's Christ in us and it says which worketh in you both to will and to do God works in your inner man to desire to please him and to do the work he does that through the word through the spirit and through your meditation and prayer he's always working and then the it's interesting the next verse he it starts with the word do do all things without murmurings or disputings there's in verse 12 there's work out work in 13 it says to will and to do and the next verse is do all things there's doing there's work involved in this this walk of faith but it's yielding and it's God's power and wisdom within us as I said before okay <clears throat> I want to go to Philippians 4 Philippians 4 has so much to say about this and the whole chapter really is how we stand fast through all the difficulties I think it's a process of standing fast you know he wants us to be able to rejoice in all situations through the the Christian walk it takes time to learn it's Philippians it's advanced doctrine but he teaches you some things I'm just gonna highlight them and you go back and study them out for yourself or to allow moderation to to rule us to keep us focused and to be boundaries um, we're not to be anxious to, to be full of care um, but in everything by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving being thankful not always complaining about what the problems are but being thankful for everything all those provisions that I went over and um, making a request talking to God about your request realizing God's got not going to zap them there but talk to him about it talk to members of the body of Christ very key members that are close to you if you need to talk to uh, someone um, and confide in someone but make your requests known to God and then it says there's going to be peace you're going to have God's uh, peace there the peace of God which passeth all understanding is going to keep your heart and your mind it's going to settle you down and keep you focused and realize this world is not our home and then he goes on to give you some instructions about meditating on certain things in verse 8 and then he says now in verse 9 those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me Paul there's that word again do and the God of peace shall be with you the God of peace peace comes from God he will be walking with you he's in you he's stirring up the doctrine you will have this peace on a regular basis not just once when you do the prayer but rather it's going to be a part of your character it's a fruit of the Spirit and then he goes on to learn contentment and in the problem and that is hard Paul had to learn it too it says verse 11 not that I speak in respect of want for I have learned it took him time 
in what's overstayed I am therewith to be content. And he has and how he did it was he realized it's Christ in verse 13 that enables him to do all things. He's the one that gives the strength to us through his word. And then down there in verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It's all through the word. The answers, the power, the wisdom is in the word. And so that's where you want to go. And so um, we, we need to think about these things. And as we function as an adult, a spiritual adult, and we realize this is a journey, we're under construction, that we need to yield, and that life is not going to be easy, God's not going to zap it away, and we can't just sit back with our feet kicked up and expect God to do, do all the work, nor do we want to just try, 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 and just work ourselves to a frazzle. Um, there's some fruit that we'll see if we're functioning under the law, and um, to give us a flag that we might not be yielding. And so what we want to do is allow God to, to yield. I'm sorry, allow God to, le to lead us. And uh, that's his way, not our way of letting our flesh yield. This last verse that I want to go over is Ephesians 4, uh, 19 through 21. And well, I guess it's not totally the last verse. Um, sorry, four. I'm having trouble finding it here. Okay. Um, 19 through 21. It says, we need to understand the love of Christ. It starts off earlier in 17. And it says, and to know, verse 19, the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God, his love working and manifesting itself in us, understanding his love for us, gives us the motivation and power to also live it with others. And it says, now unto him that is able, he's able to do, to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us so he's not he's able to change the circumstances it's just that's not what he's doing today his power is being manifest in the inner man and so as we listen as we meditate as we think on these things we can access that power that worketh in us and then 21 unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ through all the ages, world without end. Amen. And so as we think about that, we want to think about his power and wisdom. And we want to also go back to um, Romans 8, really back 6, 7, and 8, where we started. And really, there's some many wise things in these three chapters because it helps us to understand our identity in Christ and access the power and wisdom of God. And so, <clears throat> but there are many, many things that God gives us. He, he actually takes the suffering in, let's say, verse 17, 18, and, and so forth, and he takes the suffering and works glory for us. There's going to be glory revealed in us. He goes on and talks about helping us to learn patience, giving us hope. He gives us the Holy Spirit to make intercession for us. And then he works all things for our good. And so this is just one chapter. And then to top it off, through all those things, Romans 1 through 8, by that time, he's given us confidence. And if you read 31 through 39, if you don't have that confidence of, of what it's revealing here, if God be for us, 
who can be against us? And he goes on to explain. If you don't understand it, go back to Romans 1 through 8 and read it again and again, because that's what those chapters, one of the many things that those chapters will teach you, confidence in the love of God, that he is able and he's enabling you by the power of his word working in you to do it. So <clears throat> you can be fully persuaded in what you know in your inner man to walk by faith, just yielding to what God teaches and you know. You can know for sure that God will, will help correct you and teach you through the Spirit. There's one more verse here in Philippians 3 I wanted to read um, that teaches this very thing. When you walk by what you're taught, it's a rule. And Philippians 3 says in um, verse 13, Brethren, this is Paul, I count not myself to have apprehended. He doesn't know everything. But this one thing I do, this is something he's doing. Forgetting those things which are behind. Don't put yourself under the law or performance. Worry about the past. And reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect in your understanding of what you know, be thus minded that if in anything ye be otherwise minded, if you don't understand some things, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereinto we have already attained what you already have attained to, what you know, let us walk by the same rule. It's your rule. Let us mind the same thing, minding things. That's what Romans 8 is all about. Not behavior, it's minding what's on your mind. Minding things of the spirit, being spiritually minded. That's life and peace, Romans 8 says. And so... A question came up um, as I was discussing it with a couple other ladies. Um, how do you know if you're living uh, by grace, yielding unto God and not doing it in your own energy? You know it by the fruit, the fruit of the spirit or the fruit of the flesh. If you're angry, frustrated, pressured, that's not grace. That's you and your effort. You need to rest, back away from the situation and think. Think about what's pressuring you. What is on your shoulders? What um, efforts are you doing? What are you yielding to? Um, fo the focus, like I said, is the mind and God will teach you the rest and then you can rest and not worry about that. Years I, I worried about, am I in grace or am I walking in the flesh? Law or grace, what is it? And it wasted a lot of time. Just walk by faith in what you know at the time, and God will reveal it to you. Okay, well, we're going to stop there. And I hope this has been beneficial. God has some things he's responsible to do, and we can count on him. He has done it and is doing it. He always is. We need to listen. Listen to his word and listen to what the word is teaching us in our inner man, the spirit stirring it up and walk by faith in it and keep growing. And that's as simple as it is. Uh, and yet there's many, many details. Look up some of these verses in the context for yourself. And I pray that um, you continue to mature in Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time. Help us just to keep growing. None of us have it all down. It, we're like I said earlier, I know we're a construction and you are constructing a building, an edifice of doctrine uh, in us. Help us to desire it, and the will, and to do it. And we just need to watch the magnificent power and wisdom of, uh, that you show us in your precious son's name. Amen. Thank you.